Hi, I'm Louise Gamble. I'm the KTP associate working on the Honeyberry project. This project is in collaboration with the James Hutton Institute and the Scottish Honeyberry Growers Cooperative. The Scottish Honeyberry Growers are a group of nine different growers all across Scotland. Um, they've recently introduced Honeyberry into their farms because um, they see the environmental and economical benefits of growing this new crop for Scotland. Today my main aim is to take you on a nice tour of our orchard here in Dundee, explain a little background about the honeyberry and its origins and show you how it develops within an orchard over time. Um, so we've now moved to um, a different part of the orchard just to show you the different developmental stages of the honeyberry. So we're here now looking at plants that are around about two to three years old um, and they're starting to grow nicely um, in terms of structure. We're able to monitor how well they're growing, um, how they're adapting to our climate. We're also able to compare different varieties. So you can see that this variety we have here um, is definitely different from the variety we have over here. This one is um, a lot more vigorous but there's um, a lot of different uh, things that need to be taken into account when selecting the best varieties. Not only the growth is important for the machine to be able to come along and harvest, um, we also need to be aware of how well they grow in our climate and the berries they produce and what market those berries will go into. So one uh, really important thing for this crop is pollination. Pollination must occur for berries to form uh, properly um, and to reach the, the maximum size. In general, honeyberries are not self-compatible, so they do need a pollinating partner. Um, and this also needs to be specific. They don't just pollinate with any other random variety. So pollination obviously then occurs um, during flowering time, as I mentioned, uh, from starting from kind of March onwards. Um, and it's really a key thing to keep um, a good population of bees, um, so naturally occurring bees and bumblebees in and around the orchard. Um, and this is why we have nice long strips of wild flowers here, as you can see. Um, this nice well purple flower which maintains the, the bee populations when honeyberries, the honeyberry season has finished. So this particular variety is ready for harvesting today. We can see that the berries are uh, really nicely coloured, um, they're ripe, there's really good flavour of them, really tangy. Um, and behind us now we have the harvester coming so we can have a look at that and see how that is um, removing the berries from, from the bushes. So we've now moved up to the more established part of the orchard. You can see that the bushes are really well developed here. Um, these have been harvested previously. These were actually harvested two weeks ago by the mechanical harvest, as you've seen earlier. Um, you can see there's a, a, a big difference in terms of width and height in comparison to the smaller plants we showed or the younger plants we showed earlier. Um, the, so these are growing really nicely. We're looking at about 1.5 metres in height. These will need to be pruned back because they have a tendency to grow um, outwards for this particular variety, but there are other varieties that are a lot, much more upright and more suitable for harvesting. Um, we still actually have a few berries left over um, from harvest. So we're now here at the James Hutton Institute where we have a dedicated plot for honeyberry varieties. These varieties are commercial ones that are available, mainly from Poland and Canada. Um, it allows us to keep our eye on all these different commercial varieties and see how well they grow in Scotland. This is important, very important for the cooperative and the growers, and obviously for establishing honeyberry varieties in the future. 
We're also looking at the pruning techniques. So you can see here there's a big difference between uh, this plant here and the smaller ones back here and how well they're developing. Um, and this plant wasn't cut back last year, the one at the back was. And the one at the back will be better suited to the harvester that I mentioned um, previously in the orchard um, and is developing a lot more vigorously than these ones at the front here. So we also have um, a plot here dedicated to honeyberry crosses. This um, area here is dedicated to controlled crosses that were done in the glass house and these plants are ones which were crossed last year so these are su the successful crosses. Um, and we've got we've actually done some crosses this year as well in the glass house which will be added to this section um, and this is really important for future honeyberry agronomy and development obviously we're very aware of how um, popular honeyberry will become in the future so we're interested in developing the correct varieties for Scotland and through this um, these crossing experiments we'll be able to develop some really good varieties for the future so I really hope you've enjoyed learning about the honeyberry um, and all the different interesting facts and also looking at how well it's developing here in Dundee. I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions that you may have, so please feel free to contact me.